Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are in this world. How is everybody today? My name is Purple Mumble and I'm here to stream some live cooking today for you. We're doing a cream, creamy red bell pepper pesto pasta bake. Um, a few exclamation mark recipe and the recipe will pop up on the screen for you or a link will take it to you. Um, can everybody hear me okay? Can I get a thumbs up if you can hear me? Can I get a thumbs up? Awesome, that's wonderful. Right, first things first. Wash my hands before we start cooking. COVID-19 makes it all the more important to get our hands washed. I've washed them once already before I um, got online with you guys, but it doesn't hurt to get a freshen up. Move the camera. Which camera do you want me to move? I'm too short. <laughs> so you mean this camera here. How about, whoopsies. Is that better? Get a thumbs up. I'm not too short, I'm under high. The camera's too tall. Um, gotta get mum's apron on. Lower. <laughs> okay. Lower still. Better? I hope you're happy with that. Because I'm not going to make it any lower than that. Better. Good to hear. Right. So Fluffy Cheeseburger is my number one son. He's also a streamer. He streams and he did a live stream today. He was uh, playing bass guitar, which he's learned to do on stream. So um, well done you, Fluffy Cheeseburger. And he also games online as well, usually with his mates, but um, occasionally he gets some complete randoms popping in and gaming with him as well. Uh, Msage 510, that's my poor long suffering husband who doesn't live with me. <laughs> he's working overseas at the moment, but um, I miss him. I need a hug. Nobody gives me hugs like Hubby does. So, Msage is in there as well. So, thanks, Msage. He'll be moderating along with Number One Son. I'm sure we'll jump in and make any changes as need be. So, Number One Son is my number one tech guy. He's an um, uh, IT professional. And uh, so, he'll be helping me along the way if I have any major whoopses. So, you will get to learn if you've watched me before and you're watching me again. Purple Mumble always has a cup of tea when she's streaming. Now, it might get interesting today because I didn't sleep very well last night. I was up at three o'clock this morning and I've been up ever since. So, um, just to make it interesting, getting a drunk British woman with a cup of tea and a glass of wine who's um, not had much sleep, yeah, could get interesting. I could end up burning the food, which is really handy to have number one son in the room next door. Purple one, the main camera autofocus is wiggling. Right, let me sort that out. There'll be none of that stuff. Oh, come on, open it up. Turn that off. Apply. Okay. Is that better? Slap that sucker up. Mm. Yes, I have tea in my veins. That's the way it is for us British lot. So I'm making a cup of tea for number one son as well. So once this is ready, he'll probably stick his face in on stream and you'll get to say hi. Now I am a skim milk kind of girl. I can't do a semi skill or whole milk. We call it skim or trim, fat free, whatever. So that's what hangs around in my house. Wipe my jug up before I stick it back in the fridge because I hate that sticky mark it leaves. So what have you guys been up to today? Good, it's better. Good, that's what I like to hear. So there's my cup of tea, just a wee cup of tea. So have you guys jumped in and um, exclamation mark recipe to see what it is that we're making? 
See, now I can't say anything, can I, on this stream without either number one son or husband trying to make it something rude. So there is no need for that. Thank you very much. This is a family show. Right, number one son, come and stick your face in the stream and say hi to everybody. There's your cup of tea. Look at that. Mmm, just a small cup. Right. Get all my electronic gadgets shuffled out the side. Are you going to say hello? Yep. You can toast me with your tea. Hello, people. Number one son, he's, he's a bit tall. If you step over here, then they can see you. There we go. There you go. Hey. He looks like a bumblebee right now. Cheers. Thank, Thank you, Fluffy Cheeseburger. Much appreciated. Just a wee cup of tea. Right, so what we're doing today, creamy red pepper pesto pasta bake so if i get that under the camera oh, actually let me move this out of the way because i can't see what i'm doing then i can put that there and you guys will see what i'm making there we go creamy red pepper pesto pasta bake try and say that fast three times i'm not going to attempt it as always with my recipes they're going to go into one of these lovely clear folders um, and as always with these my food bag recipes that I get for ingredients that I need to share with other recipes I've highlighted that with an orange pen you can see that because otherwise I'm renowned for just grabbing the ingredient and tossing the whole lot into the pan and then I don't have the ingredients for the next recipe that I might need them for so things I need today I need a pot of boiling water now my kettle it's probably going to boil faster than any hob ever would, even that induction hob. So I should just refill my kettle and get my water boiled up. And as always, I'm going to try and use as few dishes as I possibly can. The deal is in this house, if I do the cooking, the son does the cleaning, and the son's more likely to clean to my standard the fewer pans that he has. So I um, won't be quite following the recipe as closely um, as it states, but I'm going to try and save on the number of dishes that I do. So first thing it's asking me to do is cook my pasta and pumpkin in a pot of boiling water. Actually, let me go through the ingredients first. Let me pull everything out that I'm going to need. I need that and I need that. I'll show you what it is that I have. Right, it's wanting a third of a pack of rigatoni pasta. So here's my rigatoni. There you go. So this pack is 500 grams. So a third of a pack is about 170 grams, but I'll just be guesstimating what a third is there. A pack of diced pumpkins. So as before, these um, come pre-packaged sized um, with my um, food bag that I've ordered. So there's about 200 grams of um, pumpkin here looks like they've peeled it um, a half a brown onion so there's my brown onion I only need a half of that I shall just get a tub out and I'll put the other half into a tub and it goes straight into the fridge um, one clove of garlic and I'm probably going to use all of this garlic I'm not just going to use one clove I'm going to use everything that's there because we like garlic in our house a pack of pasta spices. So pasta spices, veggie pasta spices, because we've ordered the vegetarian menu bag. Oh, thanks for the hose massage. Um, and in here, it doesn't tell me what's inside. Oh, yes, it does. It's got, no, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Paprika, sweet. So sweet paprika, sage, and basil. Not basil, it's basil. So that's what's inside my spices, but you know, just throw Italian spices in. If you don't have these little handy dandy packs or uh, something that says Italian spice, just grab and buy one of those. Um, one courgette. There you go. You might call it a zucchini. Um, three quarters of a cup of vegetable stock. So I've got myself a handy dandy oxo cube. Actually, whilst this kettle's boiling, you get a small measuring jug out. Three quarters of a cup of water into there. Half. A little bit more. So 
So I'm going to be using a stock cube today. So get that dissolving. You can squish these stock cubes in the foils, but um, I shall just toss it in. There we go. Set that aside to dissolve. Recycle the foil. What else did I need? Um, a third of a pack of large leaf spinach. So there's probably, I mean, if I fisted my hands like that, that's how much spinach you want, the size of a baby's head of spinach. And you need to wash that, and we're going to um, just roughly chop that. Um, a pack of red pepper pesto. So there's veggie red pepper pesto there, so there's probably about half a cup of red pepper pesto there. I'll put that under the camera so you can see where I go. So any old pesto that you can get out of the supermarket or make your own. Half a pack of sour cream. So this wee tub is 125 grams of light sour cream. Um, so I only need a half of that, so about 50 grams, about 50, 60 grams of that. So just half the tub. Then I need a pack of ricotta. Again, there's about half a cup there. Does it have a weight on it? Yes, 100 grams of ricotta cheese. There we go. So it's all measured out for you in these um, my food bags or bargain boxes that you might get. An egg, which came as well. A pack of walnuts, 25 grams of walnuts there and a bunch of sage. So I'll whip that out of here. I love sage, one of my most favorite herbs. That would be herbs, not herbs, which my some of my American family says. I would say herbs and get teased for it. Right. Well, hello, Eskimo brother, how are you? You found my purple strawberries. Aren't they just the most gorgeous things in the world? Right, how are you? Have you had a good day? Are you ready for a nice cook up? We've got some delicious food on our way today. Right, so let me get my ingredients pulled together first of all. Actually, I wanna get this chopping board available and I need to chop the spinach, which has been draining on the chopping board. So let me just get that done before anything else. So just roughly chop some of the spinach. Get everything out onto the chopping board. I'm gonna roughly chop it and then sling it back into that colander. Too much work. What do you do, Eskimo brother? What is, what is your employment? Oh yeah, yeah, that sucks. The sad thing of working from home is that you're always working even with the pandemic. Hey, but you know what? I guess you'll still be bringing in money. There's a lot of people that um, are really struggling at the moment as to whether or not they're going to get a, um, be able to meet the mortgage or the rent payment. So, right. So I guess sometimes it is beneficial. It might suck to be the one that's working when everybody around you is taking time off, but um, yeah, the money still comes in. Project administrator for a telecommunications company. So work that you can do from home. And telecommunications right now, I'm sure, is um, high on everybody's need list, isn't it? I know everybody's internet usage where we are has just absolutely skyrocketed. You've got kids uh, trying to do schoolwork. You've got parents that are trying to do paid work. You've got people that are trying to live stream movies. And then you've got people like me that are just using the internet entertaining people like you guys. So thank you for all you do to keep our internet running. Everybody needs a good internet connection nowadays. We wouldn't have said that 100 years ago when the, when the um, Spanish flu was out, would we? Right. So we've got um, a lot of benefits with this technology. At least we can get word out and uh, get people into lockdown. And who knew we would see something like this in our generation, huh? Quite shocking. Right, let's let that drain. Oh, I should mop, mop that mess up over there. Can't stand it when my bench top gets messy. Radio. So what else do I need to do? 
Cook my pasta and my pumpkin in a pot of boiling water for 14 to 15 minutes. Right. Let's get some boiling water on the go. Right, please work this time. Last time you didn't want to work for me. I'm hoping you're going to work this time. Oh, first time, yay! And it wants me to cook it for how long? 14 to 15 minutes. Let's remove this in front so you can see what's happening. It's a little bit better. There we go. Right, pot on the go. With a sip of wine. A sip of wine and a sip of tea. No, I'll wait for the tea. Right. Yeah, in case you didn't hear earlier on Eskimo weather, I didn't get a whole lot of sleep last night. In fact, I got very little, maybe three hours at most. So I'm somewhat of a zombie, zombie today, so it might get interesting because I got a glass of wine on the go and my cup of tea on the go. So I'm highly likely to be burning food. So it's really good that number one son is in the other room. I hope he's got his sniffer working. I'm just going to chop this pumpkin up a little bit. It doesn't tell me to, but um, I don't like huge, great big pieces of pumpkin on my fork. So I'm just going to cut them into one size pieces. Is that what it tells me to do? One pack of diced pumpkin. Oh, I'm just going to dice it. It's about one centimetre, which is, I guess you could say, half an inch. So that is boiling away. Perfect. So we found that um, with these My Food bags, they're really good value for money. I mean, number one son isn't a particularly large guy, and um, I'm not a particularly large person myself, and we can quite happily make these last two nights. Sometimes you might need to add a bit of a salad to stretch it out a little bit further, but um, yeah, these. These meals are supposed to last for one night, but uh, they're pretty big size portions. Oh, I didn't sharpen my knife. Sorry, Hus Hub. He always gets bent out of shape because I don't sharpen my knife enough. But when it's too sharp, I just, it goes out of control and I always feel like I'm more likely to cut my fingers off. Shall I give you the big shot as to what I'm doing here? probably a good idea with it. Okay, that's not what I wanted. That's what I wanted. There you go. Now you can see what I'm doing. Chop on my pumpkin. Oops, missed a bit. So this all needs to cook up for about 14 or 15 minutes. So that's going to be the pumpkin and the pasta will be going into here. So I guess there's probably about a cup and a half of pumpkin there, diced pumpkin. Rigatoni. I guess you could use any old pasta. They're not as blunt as butter knives. Fire extinguisher spe <laughs> speed dial to the fire department. Yeah, it's just over there next to the bin. I do have a fire extinguisher. Right, so about a third of a box of pasta. This is about 160, 170 grams. And my pumpkin can go in as well. Anybody see me drop that piece of pumpkin on the floor? Give it a wash off, that's going into. My floors are clean, they've just been steam mopped. Right here. So we'll let that cook. Start that. Always put a lid on the saucepan to keep the moisture out of the kitchen. 
especially as we're coming in towards winter time, a damp house is a much harder house to heat. So uh, yeah, put the lid on the saucepan, keep the moisture in the pan. So cook the pasta and the pumpkin in a pot of boiling water 14, 15 minutes until both are just tender, then drain well and toss with a drizzle of oil to prevent sticking. Now, this is gonna be my serving dish. I've already checked, this will fit inside my bench top oven because I don't like putting my big oven on. Um, so I'm actually gonna drain this off and drop it into that, that dish and try and have a few dishes to have to wash up at the end. Cup of tea. had pasta for a long time. We've been veganizing for quite a while. And although pasta is vegan, you can get a vegan pasta. We just haven't been um Sarge volunteers do Hi Lord Carlos. Sarge volunteers do the dishes. In his dreams. He's not around. He can't be doing no dishes. That's all number one son's job. Fluffy cheeseburgers on the job. Right. So I just need a half of this onion. Chop that sucker right down the middle. One, right the way through. And this half can go into my storage container and into my fridge for another day. The other half the one I'm going to use. Come on, skin, off you come. Don't you hate it when this part of the onion is good, just here, but then that layer of skin is still brown and not so good. I don't want to lose the good part of the onion for the sake of the bad part of the onion. So, peel this back as far as I can. Oh, it's making me eyes water. That's a good strong onion. This is not behaving very well. Right, that's all rubbish. If you have a waste disposer or a composter, if you have a composter, use your composter. Those onion skins can go into there. I suck at gardening and hence I do not have a composter. So mine's going to go down my muncher, my waste disposal. Right, what does it want me to do with this onion? Half brown onion, finely diced. Right, finely means I'm gonna start at this end. And then I'm gonna go this way. See, I haven't chopped my fingers off yet. What have we got? Poor Fluffy, let me have a look at this. What's going on here? Oh, poor Fluffy, because he's gotta do the dishes. Is that what we're getting at? Hey, Lexa, call the fire department. Hey, Google, hey, Bigsby. Should somebody call the fire department? Poor, oh, poor Fluffy's got to do the dishes. Mum always helps him. The dishwasher does most of it. Right, now there's that piece of skin that can come away. So I'm not wasting the rest of that layer. Waste not, want not. That should be one of my little hashtag thingies that pops up. Waste not, want not. He's rich where it counts. See, straight down. Always goes down below the tr trousers. Let's face it, our stupid cat would it eat, eh? Pants would. Mm. Yeah, let's not let the cats in. 
don't want the cats in here. Right. So as soon as that's done cooking, so that's another eight minutes, I'm going to drain that off and this onion's going to be going into the pan. Prep the veggies. So that's the onion. I'm going to do the garlic. So it's only asking for one clove of garlic. Absolutely never enough. Need way more than one clove. So if you've seen my tip on how to get your garlic out of the skin, top and tail it and then squish it with your knife and it pops out of the skin. Maybe squish it a bit harder with your knife and then it pops out of the skin. There you go, like that. So I'll probably do maybe four cloves of garlic for this. So this meal I'll probably do um, number one son and I for two nights. So that would be roughly one clove of garlic per person per night. And I don't think that's excessive. If it was raw garlic, it might be a bit excessive, but this will be cooked. So most of that super strong garlicky pong will be gone. Oh, you know what? I'm just going to sling it all in. There's not much left there. So I don't generally buy garlic cloves. I'm very lazy and I buy the jarred stuff. Because we use so much of it in our house. See how it just comes out of the skin? How easy that is. The only thing is I have to keep washing my hands off. Just top and tail it. And squish it. And peel it. Oh, how do you say that name? XX Rookie XX. I'll just call you Rookie. Recipe, exclamation mark recipe, we are making, oh gosh, it's a pasta pumpkin bake thing. So, M. Saj, can you um, pop the recipe up for me because I can't remember the name and my hands are wet and I don't want to take my recipe card out. So it's like a, a red pesto, red pepper pesto pumpkin pasta bake. And I'm putting way more garlic in than I need to, but I like garlic. As does number one, son. And since we're on lockdown, the only people that are going to smell our breath are one another. So I'm sure number one, son, would say, yep, let's just sling in the garlic, mum. We like this stuff. So how's your day been today, peeps? Hope it's not been too crazy. I hope you're, if you're in lockdown, which most of the world seems to be now, that you guys are all managing okay and not going too stir crazy. So I've got to the real bottom of the garlic clove here, so it's a bit of a battle to get the skin out. That'll work. That's enough. So we'll just finally chop that garlic up. Like I said, the recipe called for one clove of garlic minced. Well, we're having a bit more than one clove. Somewhere I've got a garlic press probably in a cupboard somewhere, in a box, somewhere safe. So it got to the stage that I so very, whoops, piece of skin there, I so very rarely used it, I just put it away because we buy the jarred stuff, already minced. There we go, creamy red pepper pesto pasta bake with pumpkin ricotta and walnuts. Wow! 
Yep, great team. Thanks, guys. M. Sar, she beats me if I don't. Is that why you hide away the other side of the world? Because so, I beat you so much. I'm the one with the bruises. I have the evidence. Right, so that's that dropped. We all like that garlic. Find that box, that box of what? Oh, the bargain box, do you mean? Do you mean? Oh, off the garlic press. No, because that's the last of my garlic. I won't be um, using any more. So I'm just not going to do it. Right. This at least will simmer a little bit more than that. So that can be that tad. Right. Finley sliced the courgettes. Love courgettes. Number one son isn't so keen, but he'll eat it. See those chefs that go chop, 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 you get the hands like this now. Chop, 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 chop. Oh, no, I'm not doing too badly. I just want to make sure they're thinly sliced. And I tend not to be so thin if I try and do it quickly. No, that one, a foot one. Yeah, they're going thicker now, see. Courgettes are going everywhere. Courgettes are hit the floor. Courgettes will hit the floor. Get on there. Now, there's a little tip for you. When you're chopping your courgettes, if you start at the other end, so the the the, the bottom bit, <laughs> and this is the piece that was chopped off of the courgette plant, keep that in your hand and start chopping at the opposite end, because then you can use this as a little handle to cut the last of the courgette up. See? Then you don't have to cut your fingers off which is never recommended. Right. Oh, and that's boiling over. Turn it back down again. It's going to be like that. Um, and it wants my... What have you done my vegetable stock? Half a pack of... Leaf spinach washed and roughly chopped, already done that. One pack of pesto, sour cream, ricotta egg, bunch of sage picked. So let me just pick my sage. So I'm just picking the leaves off. Nothing better than the beautiful smell of sage. Get those new leaves as well. These always remind me of rabbit ears. They've got that kind of slightly furry texture. We can have rabbit ears for dinner. Right, now I know I'm going to be dropping these later on on top of my puff fish, so what I'm just going to do is tear them into pieces. Put the garlic there, I don't want that. Right, so that's for my pasta. The 14 minutes is up. Let's see how well cooked we are. Oh, yep, that's al dente. Perfect. So we can kill that heat. So I need to... Oh, you know what? That's supposed to be salted water. Ho-hum. Oh, well. Cook pasta and pumpkin, pot of boiling water, 4 to 50 minutes until both are just tender. Drain well and toss with a drizzle of oil to prevent sticking. I'll take this over to the sink and drain it. The next part of this cook, I'm supposed to be getting a fry pan out. As I said, I don't want to make any more dishes than I absolutely have to. Come on, drain out of there. This 
lid is too hot for me to handle. All of the water out of that. Oops, that's how we just cut the pieces that let out. Right. I'm going to pop this into my serving dish going to go into there straight away. Every last piece in. And we'll just add, move this out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Add a wee drizzle of olive oil and give it a stir. Stop it from sticking. So I'm honestly thinking what's the point of um, getting extra dishes out that you're just going to have to wash up. So if I can do all the cooking in one dish and just have another one for the serve, then that's what I shall do. Give that a stir up. Help that pasta and pumpkin to stop from sticking. I said that should have been salted water, so I'll make sure I add a little bit of extra salt when I season toward the end of the cook. So set that out of the way. And that's just cooked kind of al dente, it's just about to the bite. Just the way we like pasta. Right, so next thing it wants me to do is heat a drizzle of oil. So I don't like to put olive oil directly into a pan that I'm going to fry up with. Um, I found in the past that um, it can take on quite a burnt taste. So um, I'm not going to be doing that. I'll use a regular old canola oil use sunflower or whatever you have inside your pantry. Just a drizzle of that inside my pan. You'll notice I always wipe my, my olive oil butter bottles down so you get a wee wipe. I hate it when they go oily on the outside or my cooking oil bottle. So I pop them into there and then after I've wiped them down I put them all into a plastic tray See, just like this and that um, goes back into my pantry and it stops getting those horrible oily marks on the bottom of your pantry. There's a number one mum, purple mumble tip. Right, heat a drizzle of oil in an oven proof fry pan. That's not what I'm going to be using because I'm going to use a serving dish. Um, on medium heat, cook the onion for two to three minutes until softened, and then they add the garlic, the pasta spices, the courgette, and cook for a further minute. So let's pop the onion into here. Another piece of stray veggie going. Don't think you're going to escape, mate. You're definitely going in there. So let's pop the onion in the pan. Pop that back on. Get a wee spoon to give that a stir. What shall I stir with? That. That shouldn't take long to cook at all. Right. Eskimo brother, you're off. I'm sorry, mate. I've not been commun communicating particularly well today, have I? And like I said, I'm half asleep. No, it's not coriander. No, I'm coriander. Zucchini is the same as uh, courgette, the zucchini. So just another type of pumpkin. Good to have you here, Eskimo brother. Thank you for joining with me. Sorry I've not been much of a chatterbox today. As I mentioned earlier, I'm half asleep. Let me get into that wine. It might brighten me up a little bit. Cheers, guys. Mm. 
Oh, yum. Oh, no, I didn't notice it. Yourself. Thank you for the sub, Eskimo Brother. How does this pop up? Oh, okay, there it is. 29 minutes ago. Resubscribe, tier one. Oh, two months. Oh, thank you. That's very sweet of you. Thanks, Eskimo Brother. Good to have had you here. Have a good rest of your day. Don't work too hard. Okay, so that's my onions in there. So the garlic can now go in. Where can I sit this lid? It's going to have to go over there whilst I pop the garlic in. Let that cook for a wee moment. Yummy. Yeah, I don't think I heard... Um, is my thingy supposed to make a tring sound? I didn't hear the tring, or maybe I was just not paying attention. So that's why I missed what was going on there with Eskimo Brother, but thank you. Right, to add the garlic, pasta spices, and courgette. So let's get the courgette in here. I want to turn down the heat already. There's my courgette and the escapee. The pasta spices. Italian spices if you don't if you're not using the um, my food bag kit. Just a regular old Italian spice. This one has got in it, I didn't mention it before, papri sweet paprika, sage and basil. Not basil, it is basil. I think I'll actually add some salt now as well, because I didn't salt that water earlier on, so for the pasta, so I'll just toss them in there now. Oh, fluffy cheeseburger. You, so you heard a go ka -ching. I'm sorry, then it's just me. I'm just switched off today. No different to any other day, really, I suppose, is it? Um, cook for a further minute until fragrant. Add the vegetable stock and a pinch of salt and reduce the heat to low. So here's my vegetable stock, which I've made up from a vegetable cube. Thank you for being on the job, boys. Somebody needs to be. Get all of that stock yumminess out of there. Oh, the smell of this is just divine. I say the smell, I smell with my tongue, so. Just yum. All right, so how long should we let that cook for? I shall add a little bit more salt. We'll use this one. Pinch of salt, reduce heat, and let simmer for three to four minutes. Give it up to a simmer first. Start four minutes. Come on, get simmering, please. She'll demand more heat until you simmer, damn it. I want that courgette to soften just a little bit. There it goes. You don't have any music? Oh, hang on, let me crank it up a little bit. It's playing here. Is that better? Right, I'm going to let that simmer for about three minutes with a sip of wine. Cheers, Pete. Yes, but you have purple mumble. Who needs music when you've got purple mumble? 
Right, so I'm going to have to turn this because it's not getting in the, it's reflecting in the light for me. Porchetta's tender, removed from heat. Stir through the spinach, the red pepper pesto, sour cream, and cooked pumpkin and pasta, and then season to taste. So the spinach is going to be going in there, the red pepper pesto, cooked pumpkin and pasta, season to taste. Small bowl, I want to combine the ricotta and an egg. Got my egg. Just went all over my fingers. And a spoon, just a small one. Fluffy cheeseburger needs another nap. Oh my goodness me. Just can't hang this one. I'm the one that needs the nap. I've not had a nap. I'm like a walking zombie. Right, so there's my ricotta. So my egg and my ricotta get mixed together in a bowl with a pinch of salt. So let's give it a wee grind. Pinch of salt. So that's going to be part of the final topping. It's going to get washed. I should have used a fork for this. Oh well. There she goes. Starting to combine. ETA on dinner. Um, I would say probably 10 minutes. So if you had a nap now, um, you're going to miss the glorious reveal. Because literally, in another couple of minutes, everything gets combined into one pot. This gets dolloped on top and it goes under the grill, and then we're good to go. So I certainly wouldn't be napping just yet, son. As always, number one son will give me a 100% honest score. I've tried paying him to get a higher score, but that don't work, so I don't pay him anymore. It's going to be honest. Right. So that's this cooked. Let me switch that off. Stop that from beeping. Whip off the lid here. Now, what am I supposed to add to that? Because I can't remember a thing. Just of all, blah, 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 till the add garlic pasta sauce. Oh, hey. Add garlic pasta spice, I've done that. Add vegetable stock, done that. Pinch of salt, done that. Simmer for uh, until courgette is tender, done that. Stir through the spinach, the red pepper pesto. There's my spinach I prepared earlier. Red pepper pesto, does it say the whole pot? Yes, it does. So this is 100 grams of red pepper pesto. You could use any old pesto, I'm sure. Oh, that looks nice. Very Italiano. We were having a discussion the other day about um, in Italy, you just have to add an O to any word and it comes up with the Italian version. And we lived in Italy for a number of years and it's not actually quite the truth, but it's very, very close. Thankfully, a good proportion of Italians do speak English, which is a lifesaver when we lived over there. Spinach, yes, it's good for you. Gives you muscles. Muscles. I'll put my knife sharpener away since I didn't use it. 
I love the feel of the outside of that. It's got one of those kind of a, like a velvety texture to it. It doesn't look so bad, does it? Right, um, sour cream, so it's half the tub of sour cream. So the sour cream is, how many grams? 125 grams, so it's going to be about 60 grams of sour cream. That can go back in the fridge. Yum. Ooh, what a little spoon. Ooh, doesn't that just make it look instantly rich? Beautiful colours in there. The red of the pesto and the green of the spinach and the courgette. Yum. Okay, what else do we want into here? Cooked pumpkin and pasta and then season to taste. So I'm back over with my pumpkin and my pasta in the dish that I plan on cooking in. So that has a little bit of olive oil mixed in with it to stop it from sticking and that's worked a treat. Lovely orange pumpkin here. One of my favorite vegetables is pumpkin. Let's give it a good stir around. It's looking pretty good. Should make for a one delicious dinner. Possibly for two nights, we'll see. Okay. My contact lens is slipping in my sleepy eye. Have some more water, that'll lube it up. Season to taste. Couple of grinds of salt, plenty more grinds of black pepper. Love black pepper. Got multicolored peppercorns here. And the green in the pasta does look nice, doesn't it? Mind you of living in Italy. <laughs> you got your salt shaker out, mate. Right. Let's bring my dish back over. So this is going to go under the grill. It doesn't need to go into the oven, it just goes under the grill. I guess you could prepare it ahead of time and then just bake it in the oven to heat it through again. So everything into the serving dish. I don't know what I've done to my wrist, but I cannot grip with this hand. My birdie fingers playing up. You know which one's the birdie finger, don't you? That middle one that can get you into trouble. I won't display it. It'll get me into trouble. Oh, it's a good, good choice of pan. Purple mumble, you did good here, love. Generally, you pick something that's too small. Beautiful, just beautiful. Wipe my hop down. Move that out of the way. That was the hop making the noise, it was not me. Just wipe the side of the dish down as well, make it pretty. There, doesn't that look nice? Okay, what do we have to do last? Um, in a small bowl, combine the ricotta and the egg. Here's one I prepared earlier. A pinch of salt, and did that. Spoon the ricotta mixture onto the pasta and sprinkle with the walnuts and the sage and cook for three to five minutes. Now, neither number one son nor I like walnuts, but in the essence of waste not, want not, is it a whole pack I've got to stick on here? Yes, it is, yuck. I found that if I cut them small enough, we don't taste them and we eat them. And I know that they're very good for your brains. So um, I'll just chop them up nice and small and put them underneath the sauce so they can soften. 
and hopefully we won't notice that they're in there. Doesn't it look nice? I bet you wish you're home right now, hubby. You could be eating all these walnuts. You know, I never asked you, do you like walnuts? I mean, we've been married for over 30 years, and I don't know, do you like walnuts? I guess I've never asked, because I've never, ever, ever gone out and bought walnuts. So it's never been a question, because I absolutely detest the things. But if they come for free, or if I've paid for them in the bargain bag, then I'm bugging if I'm going to throw them out. So do you like walnuts, M. Sarge? You had a bad walnut experience once. What happened? Did you puke on them? It's probably associated with copious amounts of beer at the time and you blamed the walnuts. Right. So, let's sprinkle those nasty things on. Hopefully they'll pick up the flavour of everything else that's in the dish and we won't even notice they're there other than a different texture. And I think the crunchiness will add something. You ate a bad one as a kid. Well, honey, you've, you've had plenty of things as an adult that make you hell and it doesn't stop you having them again, aka beer, 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 bratwurst, beer, sauerkraut, beer, and uh, yeah, more beer. So I don't think that you should hold that against walnuts just because you ate one bad one and it made you hell. So just don't eat the bad ones. Because believe you me, if you were home right now, you'd be getting walnuts with your dish. Right, so. This gets, I guess it just gets dollops on. Yeah. Just put it in dollops here, there, and everywhere. So let's twist it around a little bit. I expect that's probably going to puff up a little bit because it's got the egg inside of it, so as it's cooking, it might puff up some. You think you should only drink because you think it's. <laughs> You funny man. So you're telling me you don't want this dish? You don't ever want me to make this for you? So we've got a different version of um, home delivered groceries are coming um, in six days time on Tuesday of next week. Today is Wednesday, um, and it's called My Kai Box. Kai means food, I believe, or food. Yeah, food. Kai, kai means food, I'm sure it does. In the Maori language. I can't say Maori the way that you're supposed to say it. But that's as good as it's going to get from scrawny white British chick. Mm -hmm. Should only drink, I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then on top of that goes the yummy sage. And you can see now why I've picked it, because I don't want to get a big lump of sage in my mouth. So you just pick those leaves, just kind of split them down into nibbly sized pieces. And that is all going to go under the grill. I believe. Let me get in the sunlight so I can see what I'm reading. Small bowl, ricotta egg, pinch of salt, spoon ricotta, done that. Pasto, sprinkle with walnuts and sage. Grill for three to five minutes until topping is golden and has set. Yeah, so it will set. So let's pop this under the grill. Bench top oven. Love this thing. One of the best perches we've ever made. Turn that to grill. And I do have to watch this because this is a getting on in its time and it doesn't quite grill evenly anymore. So I do have to watch it quite carefully. It says three to five minutes, but I'll set up the pen and I'll just check it in three, three minutes and probably rotate it. Whoops. Start. Thank you. 
We'll move this stuff out of the way. It's a son's job later on. Number one son, he'll be so happy. I didn't make too many dishes. Been waiting for a nice solar day so I could get some laundry done and run the dishwasher and today has been absolutely glorious. So finally managed to get those things done. But I've caved. We're moving into autumn in this part of the world, in this hemisphere. And there's been a couple of evenings, well, about two weeks ago, I got into bed and it was just a tad chilly on my own. So today I've changed the sheets on the bed and I caved and I've put the electric blanket on. How bad is that? Change that view for you, there you go. Yep, so the electric blanket is now on the bed. Move the salt and pepper out and put this other stuff away. I'm probably not going to switch it on for a couple of nights or so, but um, who knows what the weather's going to be like in another couple of nights' time, and I might regret not having put it on, so better to be there and not need it than wish it was there and it wasn't. Just tidying up my kitchen now. All the bits and pieces I don't need put away. Some nice serving dishes out. And a couple of pads for when we lift that out of the oven. So, Emsage. Cuddle the cat. <laughs> well, the cat doesn't stay around for long. Four o'clock in the morning, she has her own little personal earth and then buggers off and leaves me to it. So I can't rely on her at the most important part of the night when I'm getting the coolest. Um, it's not quite taste time yet. We've got to wait for this to cook. Got to brown the top. That cools down so quickly. Look at this. So I was cooking on this just a few minutes ago. Look, it's just slightly warm. So I'm going to put that away. All right, excuse me, peeps. I have to blow my nose. I'm just going to mute you for a moment. Can you hear me? Am I on again? Can I get a thumbs up if you can hear me? Oh, that's looking nice. I'll rotate. It'll cost me another three minutes and she'll be away. Can I get a thumbs up? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Thank you, Emsage. Right, it's only a couple of forks. My kitchen's almost tidy already. So that's browned on one side. I'm just waiting for the other side to brown up some. Now my um, bench oven isn't on fire, it just does tend to steam rather a lot. That's okay. Tidying up my mess here. And see what's going on inside there. How are we doing? <gasps> yep, we're ready. That can come out. And then off. 
So here's the final result. Result. Turn my time off. Put that away. What do you think? How does it look? Are we on to a winner? Winner, winner, non-chicken dinner. You know, I've already put my serving spoons back in the cylinder. Cupboard, pull that out. Tidy up this. Don't like a mess in my kitchen. Right, come on, boy. Is he paying attention? Let's see. How long should we wait for before I go and get him? Cleanliness is next to godliness. Well, my kitchen's clean. I can't promise about the rest of the house. Oh, look, you can't see my lion. It's that time. Oh, I'm going to have to chug that tea down. It's nearly cold already. So what do I get? Just a wee cup of tea. What do I get as a score for looks? Can I get a score for looks? Here it comes. The monster ready for his food. I hope you've left that other door to the hallway. No, 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 no. Please don't let the cats in. Aww. No, don't let the cats in. Poor cats. Score out of 10 for looks. Looks good. Out of 10. The Seven. score. See, you just can't please this guy. He's a, just such there's, a... There's some nice yellows. You're a green, tit. And then that says... It's official. And you're a tit. As for an honest... Honest answer, gets an honest answer, doesn't like it, should have So what's it more. supposed to look like? A pair of titties? Yeah. And a nice backside, then you'd yeah. give it a 10. It's got a thick ass and the... <laughs> oh my. Right, can you eat quarter of this? Yeah. You hungry? Definitely. I don't know how well it's going to serve up at the dish. I hate serving. Me too. You should get your dad to do this, but... Is that cheese in there? Ricotta cheese. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Where were you, Dad? You went and got that, uh, went and got some milk from the dairy and never came back. That's a lot of food. Is that too much? No, no. That's good. Let me just wipe the bottom. Done this most of your life. I guess I didn't tell you the other room. Oh, really? <laughs> just let the kitten in. Fork for you. Meow. Keep her away from the food, please. There's one. This is the one that creates the earthquakes in my bed at night. I can't tell you the number of times she leapt. Ooh. Yeah, I know. Well. Have you got enough there, son? Got plenty. Right. It's time. Meow, wow, wow. Courgettes, yum. You hate them. Pumpkin, yum. You like pumpkin? No. You don't like pumpkin? No. But pumpkin pie's great. You just can't please the guy. No, you're not having any chilli. Right. Mmm. Need salt. Mm hmm Throw it through, mate. Tell me this isn't cooked with pasta and salt. I know, Pitchilly. Can you hear her yelling here in the background? Milling past my feet. Definitely needs salt. Is it better with the salt? Mm hmm. Right. Let me try. Mmm, mm-hmm. Mmm. Definitely. Yep, all that extra garlic I put in there is probably about four cloves. Much better than the one that they recommended. Mm -hmm. I'd definitely go with more garlic. Yep. I like that. A you? Seven? A seven? Mm -hmm. I wonder if he cooked it, if it would score higher. You know, if he yeah, put... Yeah, score worse. If he put the effort into making this, would it score higher? No, I hate my cooking. I'm, I'm basing it on the Eggs Benny scale. 
No, you can't play. You can't play some folks. You can't relate everything to an eggs benny. I have to. No, that's, you can't. That is the masterful dish. If but if you could never, ever, ever in your life have another eggs benny, then I would relate it. You to should that. rate it on its own merit. You look at the dish and you go, mm, yeah, I can eat that. And then you eat it and you go. <laughs> Did you hear that? She went. Pathetic. No, it really yeah, is. he's so one-dimensional. Yep, you just you can't please him. You know, I bend over backwards to try and please this kid, but. As for an honest answer, you get it. You should pay me more, and then I would inflate my scores. I'm not going to pay you. You didn't inflate them when last time I paid you, so. Mm. I really like it. I don't care what he thinks. I give that a nine. Really uh, you know what would really finish it off? Some mozzarella sprinkles on mm -hmm. top. Boom. Mozzarella that. would instantly pull it up to an eight. Pull it to an eight. Eight. Anyway, nine. I give it a nine. Definitely make that a game. Really enjoyed it. I really like the the cheesy, the ricottery, eggy on the I top of it. I think it needs cheese and then it would be better. It would be better with cheese. Everything's better with cheese, isn't it? So, any who's, I hope you enjoyed the cook today. I've definitely enjoyed it. I'm half asleep, but Thank it's good to chat. have you guys here. He's going to bugger off with his bowl. Um, but we need to have a raid, so whoever's around, if we can go for a raid, that would be wonderful. I'm just going to try and see if I can figure out at least to see who it is we may be raiding when it might happen. So who is up and alive and around? Oh, that's not doing what I wanted to do. I'm not very good at this. I'm still learning. Will I ever get any better? I need that to shrink some. There you go. So what do you think, M. Sarge? Who should we be raiding? I'm trying to see who's up and about. Oh, is that my lovely lady that I like so much? Is she live? Chef to party. Yes, let's raid Chef to party. We like him. Um, yep, Chef to Party, if we could please, let me, I'm just going to pop a name up here, see if I can open that up, Chef to Party, copy, I don't know how to do that up here, let me just hit paste and see if that works, enter, oh gosh, that's not it, you click that, <gasps> yes, I, oh no, I've got the switch app, oh see, I don't know how to do this, Curtis! I need your help. Doing yeah, but I want to see it. And I brought up a thingy and it didn't do it. Help! <laughs> Open up a new channel and it's not happening. Okay. It says he's offline when I clicked it. It says get the Twitch app. Oh. Open Chrome. Yes, I did that. There's Chef to Party and it says get the, switch, the Twitch app. Oh, well. If you guys are about, then um, please have a wee chat with him. Let him know what I've been doing and tell him that I'm absolutely useless at computer stuff. And maybe I'll catch him next time. Raid is going. I'm glad to hear it because I can't make this happen. Thanks, guys. It's been lovely to have you hang around. See you again next time. Bye, honey. Bye, Curtis. Bye, hubby. Love you guys.